Hi, this is Roger in Finland. Earlier I posted a video giving you 10 reasons to buy the Zoom H1n in 2020, but today I'm gonna give you 4 hacks to get the most out of it. The first hack is use a shock mount when you're using the internal XY microphone of the H1n. What you're hearing right now is the Zoom H1n mounted on a shock mount, it's on a boom pole and it's about 30 centimeters from my face. You can compare the audio of the Zoom H1n to the DTV3 Pro, which is about a meter and a half from me, mounted on top of the camera. Sorry for the intermission. I know that it looks like I'm trying to discredit the D3 Pro, but that's really not the case. The point I'm trying to make is that the distance between the microphone and the source, your head in this case, makes much more impact than what microphone are you using. That's it. The D3 Pro is a great microphone, I like it very much, I'm using it right now. But now, let's go back to the Zoom H1 and video. And because it's in this boom pole, it's also mounted on a shock mount. And that's gonna help with handling noise. So now if I'm touching the boom pole, it's not suffering too much. I can show it like this. And this is a really practical way of reducing the handling noise in your Zoom H1N. And you may ask, if you're gonna set up the microphone and leave it alone without touching it, what is the point of a shock mount? Well, sometimes people might be walking by or you're just gonna touch it accidentally. Now I'm thinking for those of you guys that will be using the H1N on a table as a podcast solution. Many of you will be mounting it on a mini tripod, something like this. The Zoom H1N will be directly mounted on top of it. And this means that it will pick a lot of the noises and vibrations that, for example, you can make when putting your hands on the table or just tapping this deck or just moving it. If you add a shock mount between the table tripod and the Zoom H1N, is gonna reduce lots of this handling noise. So for podcasting, I think that's a quite neat solution. Another situation where it's a good idea to use the shock mount is if you're using it as a field recorder. Right now it looks like I'm interviewing myself, but here I'm using the same treble tripod that you might be using in your podcasting solution, but this is what I would go out and record nature sounds. Because it's mounted on the shock mount, the noise handling will not be a problem. This particular shock mount from Small Rig, it's a little bit too tiny, but still it does have enough wiggle room that actually it does reduce the vibrations. So if I touch it a little bit like this, this is not too bad. If I would do the same, but handling the H1N in my hands, the noise would be a lot worse. So using a shock mount, first hack. The second hack is to use your H1N with external microphones. Right now, I have it plugged via uh, an extension 3.5 mm cord into a Rode video micro that I have mounted in the same boom pole that I had this before. So why is this useful? Earlier, I had the Zoom H1N mounted in the end of this boom pole and using it as a recorder. The problem is that I had to set everything up, then mount it here, and I had some troubles to access the record button. So that's useful if everything is set correctly. But this is way more practical because now I can see exactly the levels here. I can set everything as much as I want. I have more control. And it's the microphone, the one that it's up there. Another very good reason to use external microphones with this instead of plugging them directly to the camera is that, well, now first I can get this one closer to me. Fine. I could go ahead and plug this extension cord directly to the camera instead of the Zoom H1N, but I do have less control in the camera than here. I do have less options, and this does have a better preamp, for instance. One of the biggest reasons to use external microphones with this using the line in is that you do get an analog control to control the gain of the input. This is something that you would like in most cameras that you guys are using. So, so having this extra way of setting precisely the levels is fantastic. And now what you're hearing is the Rode Video Micro, which is about 30 centimeters from my face, plugged straight into the Zoom H1N. And this is how it compares to the DTV3 Pro, which is plugged directly into the camera and it's a little bit over a meter away from me. Another type of microphone that you might want to consider and then use the Zoom H1N to record to is a lovelier microphone. Why to use one of these? Once again, you have the more fine control of the gain using the analog knob. Second one, you're not tethered by a cable that now would be jumping here between me and the camera. And third, you can just drop into your pocket, which is uh, pretty useful. And then you can leave the camera wherever you want and continue with your speech. And hopefully it will be an interesting speech. One thing that I will recommend is that once you have all the levels and everything that you want set up and you hit the record button, you then set this to hold 
so that now all the buttons are disabled. In that case, you can put it into your pocket. I would be a little bit worried to put this thing into my pocket if it would not have a hold function because then any buttons can be pushed. So this makes for a perfect pocketable solution to just get straight audio recording from a lovely old microphone. And this is how this Rode Smart Love plugged directly into the Zoom H1N compares to the DT V3 Pro, once again, which is plugged into the camera, which is a little bit over a meter from me. And the level ear is here, which again, it's about 30 centimeters from my face, which by now you might have noticed that is the distance that you probably should try to be keeping your microphone from when you're recording any kind of audio that you want to sound somewhat decent. The third hack is to use the Zoom H1N as a preamp for your camera. Even if now these cameras start to have decent preamps, the Zoom H1N as a dedicated recorder will have a better preamp than most of them. Whether you use an external microphone like this mounted somewhere or the inbuilt XY microphone in the Zoom H1N, which in most cases it will be anyway a better microphone than the inbuilt microphone of the camera, this is a solution that will give you direct better audio within to the camera. So now I have it plugged straight into the microphone input of this Panasonic G9 and this comes from the line out of the Zoom H1N. And if you want to have a test, this is how it sounds. This is the Zoom H1N. At the moment it's about 40 centimeters away from my face, plugged directly into the Panasonic G9. And this is how it compares to still to the DT V3 Pro that is far away from me, mounted on a different camera. Now let's try to see how it compares with an inbuilt camera at a similar distance. And I just discovered while making the video that if you are recording with a Panasonic G9 and you unplug the microphone from the 3.5mm input jack, then the internal microphone does not work. If you unplug and unplug when you're not recording, of course that's not a problem. Also, if you start recording with an internal microphone and then plug a microphone, that also works. The opposite doesn't. So this is now the test and how I'm showing how the internal microphone of the Panasonic G9 sounds more or less at the same distance that I was recording the hacks and tips of the Zoom H1 video. Now you got it. I'll try to put captions all the time for you guys to know which microphone input I'm using since now I'm recording through three different sources and then you can compare as well and give your opinion on the sound quality of the Zoom H1. Now we just mount it on top of the Panasonic G9 and I can use the 3mm, 3.5mm cable to plug it into the microphone input and then the audio that the camera will be recording comes straight from the Zoom H1. So, did this work? The fourth and final hack on how to get the most out of your Zoom H1N is about power. This is being powered by two AAA batteries and this is gonna last you way longer than a camera battery or probably two or three or five or six, a lot of them. But the problem is that you might forget about it. You might forget to change the batteries or even have replacements because this is battery life, it's so good until it isn't and then it dies. And then you don't have a way to charge it or replace them. Fortunately, this thing can be powered through USB. This just uses micro USB and then I can use any kind of power bank to power the device. This fourth and last hack, which is actually using a pretty basic functionality of the Zoom H1N, is for those of you guys who are using this device as a podcast solution. I assume that you will be giving it a pretty long runtime. Uh, you're gonna be using it in many cases without cameras if you're doing audio only podcasts and then just having this, especially if you have a like, tabletop solution, this will not use much space and it's gonna give you peace of mind. You don't need to care about the batteries. If with two AAA batteries, the battery life is fantastic. With one of these, it's just insane. It will last forever. Until it doesn't, so have another one handy. So as a summary of this video, trying to give you four hacks or tips on how to get the most out of your Zoom H1N, remember to use shock mount. That's especially relevant for those of you that are gonna be using this as a field recorder, holding it in your hands or on top of a table by using a small tripod or something like this. This is gonna help you a lot to minimize the noise handling. The second one is to use external microphones, like this one. And here I'm using the Rode Video Micro plugged into here. Definitely better than the XY microphone from the Zoom H1N itself. 
and either one of them definitely better than your camera microphone. The other hack or tip was about using the Zoom H1n as a preamp for your camera. Once again, the XY microphone from the Zoom H1n will be a better microphone than your camera's internal microphone. So if you're fitting this into the camera, that's gonna give you a better result. And if you're using external microphones, the preamp of this will be better than the preamp of that. And finally, power solutions. Even if the two AAA batteries are gonna give you really, really good battery life, a power bank like this is gonna give you a lot more, and if you plug it to the wall, even more. I hope you found this video about the Zoom H1n useful and interesting. If you did, please click like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon for some more content.